Yeah, from reading structure and excellence. It's not fundamental to, to faith. To I think it is. I think, I think what fundamentals believe in in Jesus, I can say that for sure. But see, the thing is, I, I believe in Jesus absolutely. As, but, 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 as God in the no, way. No, but, 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 but he didn't teach. See, if, if your belief, if your belief in that God is so fundamental, why didn't Jesus preach? It? Why didn't Jesus say, "This is eternal life, that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are three and one God. Do you know what he did say? But what he did preach, according to John 17, this is eternal life. This is Jesus preaching, that they may believe in you, the only true God, and Jesus, whom you have, Jesus Christ, whom you have said. So what Jesus is preaching there is not Trinitarianism, but Unitarianism, the idea of one God with one person, one being, not three beings. So, so you just believe that Jesus Christ is a man? Yes. But, so how do you believe that one can be saved? Well, what did Jesus say? Okay, a man came to Jesus in, in Mark, the earliest gospel, and says, Good teacher, what must I do to be saved? So the question was actually posed to Jesus directly. What did Jesus say? What was his answer? No, it's not what he asked. No, he said it. No. Go through what Jesus' response was not follow me. The first thing he said, so remember, Mark chapter 10, verse uh, 17 on, a man comes to Jesus and says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, why do you call me good? There is no one good but God alone. So firstly, he denies that he's God. All right? That's the first point. So for salvation, you don't believe Jesus is God. Correct. Secondly, what did, he do, what did he then say in specific answer to the question? What did he next say? But this is Jesus' answer to the question of how we're to be saved. It's fundamental to our relationship with God. He said to this guy, obey the, obey the law, the Jewish law, the commandments. And Jesus listed them. He, he said five of them. You know, uh, only your, your father and mother and so on. The man said to him, I've obeyed all those since I was a youth. And the passage says, Jesus looked at him and loved him and says, you lack one thing. Now, I'm stressing this because one means not two, not three, but one. One thing. What was the one thing the man lacked to be saved? According to Jesus in Mark 10. What was it? Something about selling your wealth to the poor. Right. Give it, is that all right? Yeah. Your yeah. treasures or something like that. No, yeah. it's very yeah. answer. Get, get, well, no, no, it's it. it the, 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 the words matter. Give all your treasure or your wealth to the poor, or your treasure to the poor, and you will have wealth and treasure in heaven. So by giving your wealth to the poor, you will have wealth with God. You'll be you'll be rich with God. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one what thing. Did you say after that? Yeah, that's the one thing that he lacked. Isn't that interesting? Okay. So what what, what did he say after that? I'll come to that in a minute. I, I don't. I want to. I want to help pause on this because what, what do we what have we learned so far? That Jesus denied he was God. That to be saved, you've got he to... He deny it. Okay. Good teacher, what must I do to have eternal life? Why do you call me good? Why do you call is me that, good? That There's denying? no one good but God alone. Is that denying or affirming that he is, that like God is God? Uh, it's denying. Absolutely denying. Absolutely denying. Absolutely. So he denies he's God. He's, he denies he's God. And then he says to the man, in answer to the question about how to be saved, he says, obey the Jewish law. Obey the Sharia, in other words, the Jewish divine law, the halakha. The Sharia, it's the same thing. Yeah. So that's interesting. This is, by the way, something that Paul would never say in his letters, and it's something I've never ever heard a Christian minister preach from the pulpit. So he says, obey the law. But Jesus said you can. No, you just said you can. What was the point of why? What, 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 what was, so I, I, I can't. I can't talk to people. It's a lack of. It's, he has a lack, severe lack of understanding. What, what they, was, they give you a personal right? attack. I'm sure that helps. What was his point of saying that? What was it? He's answering the question. Like, what, what did he say after that? But we'll, we'll continue with the story. So, so, so uh, the man says. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Um, 
you have my Bible. Yeah, please, please, do. please do. <laughs> You're more. Uh, <laughs> you've got it all in your head. So, I do. You know, Unfortunately, I'm, I do know the passage I'm, by I'm, heart. So I'm, I'm, actually, are, I'm reading it through. I, I, yeah. I know the passage by heart. Yeah, so, so, um, <laughs> um, so, in, in answer so to the question, what must I do to be saved? Jesus denies he was he was good or God. Uh, so he's a very humble, pious Jew. You see, you see, Yahweh, the Lord God of the universe, would not say, "Why do you call me good?" Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no one good but he someone else. But him, uh, saying, but him so, saying that. So, so continue. Don't, what, don't so, say, obey the law. So Jesus is saying in response, "Be a good Jew, obey the halakha, obey the Jewish law." The man says, "I've obeyed all this since I was a youth." Jesus says, "He lacks how many things? Nazan? How many things does a man lack?" Oh, is it one thing? One thing. <laughs> yeah. What is the one thing that Jesus lacked? Uh, the man. Jesus, the man. What is, what's the one thing he lacked, Nazan? Um, his love for wealth. He's right. No, like but, his... Okay. The man. Jesus says, "Give all your wealth, your treasures to the poor, and you will be rich with God." Okay, so that's the one thing. And what does then Jesus say after that? This is the question you asked me. I'm asking you. What's the one thing Jesus says? So after the one thing has been dealt with, issue, we know what the man lacks. What does Jesus then say to the man? To the man? Yeah. He's talking to them. It's not a trick question. Uh, it's, 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 it's the part that you were alluding to. It's the part that you were alluding to. No, 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 the bit I was alluding to was when he said how difficult it is. Okay. For... Well, we haven't, oh, we haven't okay. got to that bit yet. We're going yeah. through it carefully. So the Jesus then says, follow me yeah. and come follow me. So we establish how the guy gets to heaven, what he's lacking, what he must do, all that's been dealt with. Then Jesus finally says, in addition, come follow me. Okay, so what, what's the reaction of the, man, the, the young man who heard all this from Jesus? He was like, he couldn't sell it. He didn't want to sell it. I see. He was a bit upset. A bit upset. <laughs> I like that. He was a bit upset. Okay, he was a bit upset. Fair enough. No, basically, he's, he, he went away. The, word, the, 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 the man went away sad because he basically couldn't do what Jesus asked of him. Now, what I find interesting is not just what's in that passage, which is the earliest gospel, the gospel of Mark, according to scholars, but what isn't in that passage, what's not in it. Nowhere does Jesus say, put your faith in me as your Lord and Saviour, and my death on the cross, and you will be saved. He never says that. That's what the gospel about Jesus says. I don't think he says that anywhere in the Bible. He doesn't say anywhere. He says, but, but on that passage, he doesn't say yeah. so, He talks about repentance and appointment. Yeah, believing in what, though? Believing what? Well, what's the detail? What's, what's he believing? What is Jesus saying people should believe in? Well, the gospel. Well, what's the gospel? The gospel of what's the gospel? Jesus Christ. Okay, what's Jesus the gospel of Jesus Christ? Christ? According to Jesus, in the early gospels, what is the gospel? That Jesus went around, according to Mark chapter 1, Jesus went around preaching the good news, the evangelium, the gospel around Judea. Great. What is that gospel? What was the gospel he preached? It's not a trick question, it's just a basic question. What was Jesus' ministry about? What was he preaching? I believe Jesus' ministry in the gospel itself is that it's like it's about um, saving people from their sins. So, t so telling them about like like the kingdom of God, like that God is sovereign, and, and that um, you can only go to heaven through Christ alone. So he said, so he he does say, no one can get to God. In John. Yeah. So now, in the earlier gospels, when Jesus is going around Judea, what exactly does he preach? I mean, what's his message? It's not that you only get to heaven through me. That's not found in any. It's not found anywhere in Mark, anywhere in Matthew, anywhere in Luke. Only in the very last gospel in John. But in the earlier gospels, according to Mark, for example, what is his message? What's he actually telling the the, the peasants of Judea? What's he telling them? What's the message? I don't know what you you are. What's the gospel? I'm asking you what the gospel is. Yeah, I read the answer, but as as I say, I don't have the scripture that you want me to find. I'm just saying that. Well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some examples. According to Jesus preaching in the earliest Gospels, how are we made right with God? How are we justified before God? And I'm asking you what Jesus teaches, not what Paul or my opinion is. Well, I, yeah, I believe you're justified before God through Christ, through his, his resurrection. You're justified before God through his resurrection. Death and resurrection. Believing in Jesus' death and resurrection. Yeah, yeah. That's what Jesus taught. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, well, the, what's the, the Bible does. Yeah, let me tell you what Jesus, Jesus said. The Bible does say that you're only made by Jesus Christ. Like, the Christ is yeah, the priest of the you. I, I know, but that's not what Paul preached. I, I, sorry, Jesus Christ. So, does it not matter what, what, how, how it, it God used what his matters, apostles? What matters is, is 
what Jesus taught in the earlier gospel, the earliest gospels we have. On the specific point of how we're justified before God, Jesus apparently taught, say apparently if it really happened this way, Jesus taught something very specific. He taught a story, he told us in Luke chapter 18 or 19, you remember, isn't it 18 or 19? Um, uh, about the tax collector and the Pharisee who went up to the temple to pray. Now, tax collector is a bad guy. He collected taxes on behalf of the Romans. This is pretty bad. The Pharisee, of course, we all know, is a righteous man. He's a righteous people. So they went up to the temple to the pray. The tax collector, according to Jesus, wouldn't even look up to heaven. He looked down, beat his chest, and said, God, have mercy on me. Sin. The tax collector said, This bad guy said that. The good guy, the Pharisee, says, according to Jesus, Thank God I'm not like this tax collector. I fast, I pray, I pay zakat, I uh, fast during Ramadan, I go on Hajj. Okay. So Jesus said, The tax collector, amazingly, was justified before God. Because, what's the reason? What's the reason? Because he cried out, he knew that he was a sinner and he asked for forgiveness. What did Jesus Jesus says the reason the man was just This is the key point. Okay, you, uh, you tell me now, hope you're not satisfied with my response. Well, no, I, I'm just looking for the, what Jesus says. I'm not saying... I'm just looking for what Jesus says, so, all right? So ahead, no, not your ahead. paraphrasing and interpretation of what you think he said. Okay, what, did ahead, Jesus, what did Jesus say? Okay, according to all modern translations, Jesus says, whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Okay, so Jesus said the tax leader went home uh, justified before God because he humbled himself before his Lord. Now, what, 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 what world religion is known for submission and humility before God? Islam. Oh, Islam. What does that mean in English? Oh, submission. Submission to God. to God. Right. So, Jesus actually, in that verse, interestingly, teaching what a later prophet from Arabia said in many hadith, actually, and is actually found in the Quran. You're not made right with God by believing in a, a, sacrifice, a human sacrifice of the cross and the cross. You'll believe by humbling yourself before your Creator. And that is a definition of Could I help her out? You know, you can use Mark 10 45 about uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I've just okay. um, Jesus said. Uh, um, Jesus said he's come to give his life as a ransom for many. Can yeah. you is that maybe one of the verses? Yeah, no, I, I, guess, I, I guess the point you're getting at, like your, the point you're getting so at is the salvation. I won't forget you did this. The, the point you're getting at is the an salvation. Answer. That salvation is through works alone. The justification. Now, how are we justified before God? Because that's what the pastor but says. But, but He's asked about It seems about like that. you're overlooking the times where, I mean, obviously, um, I, I, I only know, I don't know it with, 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 but like I, I know from like, from, times where I've looked so you know apologies for paraphrasing but I know that um, the Bible does talk about righteousness through, through Christ alone it's like it's like it's older, it's older. yeah so yeah, Jesus but why why do you disregard that how are you gonna disregard what do you not believe that what, um do you not believe in the authority of, of scripture because let, let, let me explain there, there are two gospels here as I understand there's a gospel of Jesus I've given you two examples of the preaching of Jesus, the good news. What One is the man who came to Jesus, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus gave his answer. The second one about what it means to be made right with God or justified before God. That's the second example. This is the gospel of Jesus, his teaching on his own lips, according to Matthew and Luke. There's another gospel which is found on the lips of Paul. And Paul says in Galatians chapter one, but he didn't get this from any man. It was very clear he got this straight from his, his supernatural source. Mm. And this is the gospel about Jesus. Well, the gospel of Jesus, which we mentioned, is a gospel about. Now, he says his gospel, and he calls it his gospel, is Paul's own gospel. He calls it his gospel. That gospel does say, and you're right, that we're justified by faith in Jesus' death and resurrection for our sins. Absolutely, it does say. But when you compare these two gospels, the gospel of Jesus and the gospel of Paul, are they saying the same thing? Are they have, do they have the same message about salvation or not? It's magically what, what do you think? Are they the same message? Well, the thing is, I believe that they, they are the same, but I... Really? I, mean, I, I haven't I, seen anything in common with them. I've given you two examples. No, but, uh, but I, think I, what, I think what's happening, and this is something that I, I'll have to do, but I think what's happening is you're picking upon certain texts, you're not looking at 
we like sit I, I can give you dozens more. Up. I can go through many, many, many passages right. in the Gospels but think, and just make the same point. I think the, the surrounding verses are important. So, so in terms of like um, the man who wants to sell all his things, but yeah. then he can't bring himself to do it. He can't bring himself to follow. Yeah. But got to um, follow Christ. Um, Jesus then responds to, to that, like you know, talking to his disciples, saying like, how hard, it, how hard is it for like a wealthy man to do, do so? And I think the lesson there. You took that, that, you took that, you took that as a lesson now, that's true about sal- salvation, yeah. which I think... He, he was I, asked I think, about think, how to be saved. I think, I think it's linked, but I think the, um, the main thing that we learn from this man who couldn't bring himself to sell his possessions is linked with someone else who says about a he can't save two gods, mana, or... Paul uses the same word, he got him. Otherwise, you're wrong. So I think that that same kind of doctrine is is what um, you learn from that, from that scripture. I don't think I think there is a link with salvation, but I don't think it's about what you do specifically. I, I think it is about what you do. I think Jesus says you're saved by faith and works, not just by faith alone. I know what Paul says yeah. is different from that. I'm not saying they agree. They don't agree. What Paul teaches is quite different from what Jesus teaches about salvation. One is a message yeah. about Jesus mm. and about as a saviour figure who we believe in him. Jesus' message, if you look at the earlier Gospels, is not about himself. It's about God and his kingdom. And the, and the God is the Father. He's not Jesus. God is the king. He is the, the king of Israel. He's the one we must turn to. If you look at the Sermon on the Mount, for example, um, there's a, a famous bit, I think it's Matthew, seven where not everyone where Jesus says not everyone who says to me Lord yeah. Lord <clears throat> will enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does but, what, so so according to Jesus Lord is not going to get you into heaven but what will according to Jesus in that passage what will get you into heaven by doing the will of God will get you into heaven and what is the will of God according to what well what is the will of God according to Jesus? Well, no, you tell me. What well, you, you, wait, wait. you tell me. <laughs> okay. It is believing. Okay. What is the Shema? But Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? What is the greatest commandment? To love God. And then. Well, yeah, so yeah, not quite. Not quite. That's not what Jesus said. No. Okay, so go ahead. You know the Shema. The Shema is the, the Jewish, like the Shema, the Jewish testimony of faith. It's found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. The Shema is the first word in Hebrew, meaning hear. H E A R. Hear. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Lord our God is one. One, not three, not one. Now, this is the greatest. So Jesus was asked, What is the command? The greatest command. According to Mark, he was asked this question, and he responded by reciting the Shema, what I've just said in English. He actually, that's his answer. So, what, what, what do we what do we require to believe in Jesus? One, that God is one, not three. Not three beings in one God, but just one God, but like the Jews believe. In one God. Yes, I know, but you also, in addition, believe something else as well about that one, which is its three. We believe that God is, you know, a name, okay. but it's also a but Let me ask you: Do you believe the Father is fully God? Yes. Do you believe the Son is fully God? Yes. Do you believe the Holy Spirit is fully God? Yes. My mass is not great. <laughs> I admit that. I failed mass at school. But how many does that make? Three. That's three. 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 No, three. Does anyone say so that no, Father fully God, Son fully God, Holy Spirit fully God means yeah. one? Does anyone think no. no. Right. So my mass is bad. I, I've asked uh, a, a, a sample of the what, population and they're all to. saying three. But the Shema is clear. And it is actually found, if I'm sure you know, in the Surah 112. Thank you. Finish up. Ahad. What's the word Ahad mean? Ahad means one. What's the Hebrew word for, uh, for one? Ahad. 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 It's the same word. It's the same word in Arabic. It's the same word in Hebrew. The Quran says, here, uh, um, not here, uh, the, lo- the Lord is Ahad, one. Jesus recites the same word in Mark's Gospel. When asked what is the greatest commandment, the God is one. Now, if he was a Christian, if Jesus was a Christian, he would have said, well, yes, but... <laughs> 
the Father is fully God, the Son is fully God, the Holy Spirit is fully God. He never said that. He agreed with, in effect, Surah 112, he agreed with absolutely the Shema from Deuteronomy 6 4, because he quoted from it. So Jesus was not a Trinitarian. He did not believe in three divine beings. So when you ask me what you've got to believe, Jesus said, believe that first of all. And you, you, you said, love the Lord your God. No, he said the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Ahad, one. But what if the prophet said that? What if the prophet in major world religion said that God is one? Prophet Muhammad. Who? Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad. So Muhammad said the same thing. So you're saying Muhammad agreed with Jesus. Jesus agreed with Muhammad. Interesting. Interesting. Do you agree with Muhammad? With, with what point that Muhammad said? What, what did Muhammad say about God? That Allah is one. One and only. But Allah, Allah is the Arabic word for God, isn't it? Meaning yeah. that, the, but if, if Muhammad means that Jesus is a God, I don't believe, I don't agree with Muhammad. But then that means you're disagreeing with Jesus then? No, because That's your true. understanding of one is... is so one I person, believe, I, one person, yeah, I don't believe in one person, I believe in yeah. one God is three persons. So really, I still agree with what the Bible says. But, but does the Jewish Shema in Deuteronomy 6 4 talk about three persons? No. It doesn't talk about three persons. No, it doesn't. Yeah, no, Jew, no Jew before Christianity ever believed in three divine the persons. The establishment of Therefore, the Jesus did. The establishment of the Trinitarian doctrine comes from. It's not like people are like, oh, it's like what, what we see from Jesus. From the time where he says I am, from the time that John, where, from the time in, in the book of John where it says the word uh, became flesh and the word of God, it doesn't say, it doesn't say God the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, or doesn't say it anyway. fully God, one being, does it? But what I'm saying is, like, but, but even so even if that verse doesn't allude to it, doesn't bring up the Spirit, but that 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 chapter in itself um, brings out the that Jesus is God. So, you, but, but then you will find that um, where the Holy Spirit from other scriptures but what I'm just focusing on right now is that Jesus is God you can't deny that Jesus is God if, God, if the word is saying that, uh, that Jesus Jesus uh, was the word and the word became flesh and, and, and the word was God what is it? when asked what we believe about God the doctrine of God when Jesus no, was asked the no, 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 when asked about it he quoted from a, uh, the verse from the Jewish Torah which has a very clear understanding of who the person of God is no Jew has ever believed it's amazing. ever believed that Jesus sorry that God was three persons Father Son and Holy Spirit Jesus didn't have to quote that verse but he quoted the Shema from Deuteronomy 6 4 that tells us a lot about Jesus the theology it tells us what Jesus believed because he believed what Jews believe. Now, why would he believe what Jews believe? Because he was a Jew. He was a Messiah sent by God to the Jews. He says in Mark, Matthew's Gospel, I've only been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he reaffirmed the house of Israel's creed, the Shema, quoted from Deuteronomy, which the Quran itself quotes in Surah 112, word for word, the actual same word in Arabic, the same word in Hebrew, Ehad, Ahad, is the same word. It's the same word. It's literally the same word. So it looks like the Quran is agreeing with Jesus, agreeing with Moses, and you didn't agree with any of them. You don't agree with Moses or no, Jesus I, I, or with Muhammad. I agree with the Bible. And, and the, no, but I'm and, quoting from the Bible. No, but what I'm saying is <laughs> I'm quoting from the Bible. You, you looked over um, the book of John, though. And, and every time I bring up the book of John... What has the book of John got to do with Jesus saying, this is the most important commandment? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God yeah, but, is one Lord. Yeah, but that still doesn't remove... Well, why that, are you, that why are you remove, not looking at that? That doesn't remove it. Because I responded to it. That doesn't remove from, that doesn't remove from uh, my belief that God is one. No, but, but you don't believe God is one in the way Jesus believes God is one. Because he doesn't believe in three divine persons. He's already quoted the Shema, which rules out Jesus is three divine persons. Jesus proved himself through his Hebrews, after proving him I am, that I am. And even Genesis. Let's ask his earliest followers. According to the book of Acts, after the resurrection, after the Pentecost, when the disciples were full of the Holy Spirit, so they really knew who Jesus was then. And they were going out to preach the gospel and Peter the head apostle the prince of the apostles stands up and preaches to Israel yeah remember that in Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 
what does he say about Jesus? Because of course he would know, wouldn't he now? He spent three years with Jesus, he's been baptised in the Holy Spirit, he's seen the resurrection, he's seen Pentecost, everything has happened. And now he's preaching to Israel what who Jesus really was. And do you know, I agree with Peter. And do you know what he said? He says, Here, are, here Israel. Amazing. Jesus was a man attested by God with signs and wonders which God did through him, as you yourselves know. So, G so Peter attests what about Jesus? That he's a man. He does not say that he is God or Yahweh or the Son of God. Or Huh? Doesn't say that he isn't. He says he's a man. Yeah, but we believe that, that Jesus is fully man. You don't say I believe he's a man, but that we, means he's God. We believe that Jesus is fully man, fully God. No, I know what you believe. I'm saying Peter did not bear witness. It doesn't to the say Trinity. he's Donald Trump, for no, example. No, but, but I'm just saying. No, but I'm just saying. Thank you, Naza. Immortal world in Naza. Because it doesn't include it in that verse that Jesus is a God. Why would Peter miss this opportunity for this amazing? Christian truth. Jesus is the second person of the Holy Trinity. He's the divine Son of God. He is Yahweh. He's this. Yeah, he's that. He doesn't see any of that. What he does says is he's a man through whom God did signs and wonders. Now, what other religion, major world religion, believes that Jesus was a man through whom God did signs and wonders and miracles? What other major religion in the world? Just Islam. Oh, Islam. Oh, is it? Because Judaism doesn't. Hinduism. No, I have no idea what Hinduism believes, but Islam does believe. Yeah, so, but so, 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 so we believe what, what Paul is saying, word for word, like what God was working through, through Jesus. You believe he was God? We believe Jesus was God. Can, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? You're, yeah, no, wait, just, just one second. Yeah, no, no, one problem, second. No, 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 no. But I just want to say, so, so I still don't understand why you're looking, you're glancing over the book of John, but then you're, and it sounded as if you wanted to glance over it because it's not the it's not what Jesus I'll tell you what, I'll let you, I'll let, I'll let you know why I'm not keen on John. But then you'll go to what Peter's saying in Acts. Yeah, yeah. Because we, you ignore that. You ignore what Peter said. Peter is not saying yeah, but Jesus I, I God. Agree with, I agree with what Peter's saying. He's not. He, he's saying. He, he, he fails to say, he fails to say you. what you believe. But he does call him the author of life. <laughs> So, coming back to John, this is an important point, let me just clear this up. I'm not keen on John, you're right, and the reason, the reason is, I've learned from Christian biblical scholars, actually, that it's not historically reliable. It's largely a highly interpreted account of the life and teaching of Jesus. It's very different from the earlier Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and Q, another early source. The way Jesus speaks, behaves, the language he uses is so different. It is public ministry from the earlier Gospels, the historic Christian historians have decided overwhelmingly over 99% in the last 200 years that the historical Jesus is much more accurately depicted in the earlier Gospels. John represents a, a late, highly colourful, highly interpreted account of the beliefs about the person who wrote John. It's not history. Right, so you generally believe, speaking, you don't believe that the whole Bible is the full authority of God. The point is this. Let me ask you this. You believe that Jesus had said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Before I am, Abraham was, I am. I am the resurrection. I am the good shit. I am. I am. All these I am statements, right? They're only found in one place in the entire Bible, in the Gospel of John. Only found there. No way in Matthew does he say that. Or Mark. Or Luke. Or Q. No, no, hang on. This matters. If Jesus went around saying these things publicly, I am, uh, I am the Father of One, I am the Resurrection of One. How come no other gospel writer records Jesus ever saying this? Luke, who boasts of Theophilus in the beginning of Luke's gospel, dear Theophilus, I'm giving you an audio account of everything that happened in the life of Jesus. Not once does Luke ever record Jesus using this amazing language. Luke doesn't. Neither does Mark. Neither does Matthew. Neither does anyone. Only in, in John. Why does everyone fail to record these amazing statements? It's, it's not a failure if they don't include it, but it's the fact that it, the, the Bible is authoritative. It's, it's in there, so we shouldn't disregard it just because it wasn't mentioned in other places. Um, okay. However, why, why did Luke however, not? If, if Jesus went around publicly saying, I am the light of the world, why did no one ever okay, mention I've this apart from John? I've answered that question. And then, oh, I, I have. I said, I said, it's, it, I said, 
my response, I, I responded to them. Yes. And so, you have. Um, and so, my additional point was, even what, if, even with what John is saying, it still includes what's said in God's word. Right. Even if it wasn't the gospel, it refers it to God's word in, um, in Exodus. Like that. Yeah, I'm aware of the so, other. The point is, this is, this is why no, Christian no, scholars. It's not echoes. This is important. This was a why you're allowed to call the um, in the last 100 years or so. Do not think that the way Jesus is portrayed in the fourth gospel, the last to be written, the gospel of John, is particularly historically accurate. Because if Jesus did go around behaving, speaking, teaching the way he did in the very last gospel, surely there would be some trace of that in the earlier gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Q, this source they both use. But there's not a trace in it. Why would, the, why would they overlook such marvellous statements if they had been authentic and real? If Jesus said them, why would they overlook them? They'd be marvellous. You don't have that. What you have are places like in Mark where Jesus denies he is God in Mark chapter 10. But he was just denying everybody. He's not denying everybody. He's pointing out different facts about God. Like, I think he is. Yeah, well, actually, what is the implication though? It's not what why didn't Jesus say, I am the light of the world in Mark? Why did he say that? What did he say the guy? I am the light of the world. Believe in me. Believe in me or to have eternal life. All this language from John. Why yeah, Jesus if you, say if you that? count Mark? how many times. Or in yeah. Luke. Or in Matthew. Or anywhere else. I don't know to say, because it wasn't mentioned in the other gospels, even though it's not mentioned, even though it's still a it's been recorded anyway, so it's going to be on YouTube. You don't need to record it, it's going to be on YouTube anyway. We're trying to work out why the fourth gospel includes yeah, it's words it's just, from the lips of Jesus that are not found in any other historical source, even though they're much earlier in John, and they have a very different portrait of what Jesus said and did. Historians, Christian historians and other historians have concluded, therefore, that the real Jesus, the historical Jesus, did not speak like that. Because if he had, everyone would have noticed that. So, so the bottom line is that you don't believe that the entire Bible is this God's authoritative word. And so that is what is, is probably distracting you from understanding the, 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 Jesus the, the, as God. No, it's not. The problem is that the Bible is a library of books. It does not claim to be inspired by God. It doesn't claim to be by God. Okay, cool. Yeah, you just put my parents with me. So, okay. Uh, just a quick quick. The, the Bible is a library of books. It does not claim to be inspired by God. It does not claim to be the Word of God anyway. So your, your belief about the Bible is not witnessed by the Bible. It's a belief you bring to the Bible. It's not found in the Bible. Your belief is not biblical. Your belief is not biblical. Nowhere does the Bible claim to be the Word of God. Not a single verse in the entire Bible that says the Bible is the Word of God. So what you believe is not biblical. So, so what do you um, what do you render to be true and an authority? Well, do not just respond to what I've just said because this is an important point. It sounds if you're not engaging what I'm saying. No, no, no. I, so, can, can you show me a single verse in the Bible? So I believe God. there is, but I, I believe I probably don't. I probably don't. I, well, you're, I, you're talking I, about two Timothy three sixteen. All Scripture is God breathed. Is that the passage? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Right. When you read that, when you read that verse in its context, the whole chapter, Paul is addressing Timothy, and he says the scriptures that you knew, Timothy, as a youth. These scriptures are inspired Where by God. Where does it say other you? All of the passage. And, uh, so he cannot be talking about the New Testament. The New Testament didn't exist at that time in the first century when uh, Paul was writing to Timothy, which would be in the 50s, 60s, and 80s. The, the New Testament didn't exist. So he cannot be talking about the Christian Bible. 
at most it's talking about the Jewish Bible, although the canon of that Bible is is, is not very clear. So um, so that's the problem. It's not talking about the Bible. I think we're coming to a conclusion now anyway. Um, so if you want to look up the passage, Paul is talking to Timothy and saying about the scriptures that he knew as a youth. They are all inspired, inspired by God, and are useful for teaching and correction and so on. It's not talking about your Bible. So I come back to you. Your Bible does not claim to be the Word of God anyway. Okay, so I'm seeing the verse here. All scripture yeah. got is breathed out by God. Yeah. But what does the scripture he's referring to? If you look a few verses beforehand, it will tell you it's not your Bible. It's not talking about... Well, if you read the... Please work with me on this. Work with me. Don't let me uh, do I have to read it for you? No, re just read the few verses before. Look at the context. But as for you, so I'll go from verse, so that was verse 16, I'll go from verse 14. It says, as, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned and how from childhood you have been acquainted with. From childhood. Childhood. So I said youth, childhood. Say, say Same thing. writings which are able to make you wise for salvation. Right. So when Timothy was a child, when, chi when Timothy was a child, Even still, the New Testament didn't exist. Make you wise for salvation with faith in Christ yeah. Jesus. Indeed. Um, so, so what are the scriptures that Paul was talking about? The scriptures that Timothy knew from childhood. Then, so say well, yeah, early in the first century. Yeah, the New Testament hadn't been written then. You know, it's not your Christian Bible that Timothy is referring to. Sorry, Paul is referring to in that statement. It's not your Bible. So yeah, about. It says, mm -hmm. So he's saying. So he's referring to Timothy, and he's saying. Um, yep. Like he's referring to like all the things that he knew from childhood, from childhood. the scriptures from childhood. The did, you t did, did you know when the scripture? Do you know when the New Testament was written? Pardon? Do you know when the New Testament was written? No. The New Testament was written long after that. It was canonized in the fourth century, hundreds of years later. How about the Quran? Okay. How about the Quran? Is the Quran written in the time of Muhammad? Yes. No. A companion wrote. Yes. No, it was an, it was an, it was an oral recitation that was written down in his lifetime. We had the Uthmanic Codex in manuscript form today. We have a hundred percent of the Quran that goes back to at least the time. No, he didn't. He was illiterate. He couldn't write. No, he didn't. No one's ever said he did. But his companions wrote it down in his lifetime. His companions wrote it down in his lifetime. This is well established now by scholarship. This is not controversial. We have the Quran going back to the time of the companions. Companions, you were saying back to the Bible. Yeah, so, no, yeah. So I still think that he's referring to scripture now, though. Like even though, he, even though he starts off by saying, um, you've got to think historically here. Paul is writing probably in the nineteen, in the fifties, right, in the fifties or sixties AD. So he's talking about Timothy when he was a, a, a youngster or a child. The scriptures that he knew then. Now this is long before, long before anything in the New Testament being written. Like nothing had been written in the New Testament at all, obviously. Well, but the, is, the dating. This is him writing the New Testament. This is a letter. No. This, is, this is something that's going to. This is a no. letter. Do, do you think when he wrote that he was writing the New Testament? That Paul thought he was writing Holy Scripture? I don't know what, I mean, yeah, no, I know he was. I, know, I, I, I believe that. He, I mean, when he's literally saying all Scripture is God, yeah. by God. No, but he's referring to. Well, we're going around in circles here. I'm not going to labour the point because it's quite clear in context that the Scriptures that Paul is referring to are those that Timothy knew as a ch from his childhood which predates the New Testament by a huge amount of time many many uh, genera uh, several generations at least many years so it cannot be the case that that verse refers to your Christian Bible it's impossible historically for it to be referred to it's simply not possible it's historically impossible it's, it's not even interpretation it's impossible I think from what the scripture is saying is referring to scripture like yeah, but, but you're not taking it. You're taking it out of context and applying it to today. I'm trying to understand when Paul wrote that to Timothy. Well, I believe what did he Paul, refer to? I believe that Paul, in his mission to preach the gospel, mm. uh, with the, through his letters, I believe that um, 
uh, he knew there was like this way in God's word, like God inspired his word. Do you? Well, where, where does he say that? Well, I, I, I think. Where does Paul say what I'm writing to you is God's revelation? I, I think I'm, I'm getting that from. I think it might refer to the responsibility of the apostles in Ephesians. I think. Okay. Do, do you know he deny he denies in one Corinthians seven that what he's writing is from God. One Corinthians chapter seven verse twelve is a discussion about divorce and remarriage and all that, and he says, "What I'm writing to you here is not from the Lord." <laughs> well, it's no, not from no, God. Not be that for what, but he, well, hang on. He, are you saying it is from God? No, no. I'm, he, well, which is, is it? Why, this is why he makes it clear. So, he says it's not from God. This is why he makes it clear. So, so, so while he's writing, he's, he, there's a point where he wants to advise people mm. about marriage. Yeah. And, he's, and that's why he makes that point. Yeah. So he's like, by the way, this point here is my advice. Yeah, to yeah. You. So it's not from God. It doesn't mean that all everything I've written now is isn't. I'm not but, no. what, but, but you're saying it is. No, no, but no, but you said not. you said all that he wrote is God's word. Even when Paul denies what he's writing is from God, that doesn't make sense. It's a contradiction. Did anybody see that? I think both. I, I, I believe that. you can't have them both. You can't have it is God's word and then the author deny it is God's word at the same time. You can't have them both. No, you believe that, but Paul doesn't claim that. The point point you said Paul believed that he was writing God's word. I quoted you a passage where he denies he's writing what yeah, God said. Therefore, that 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 that. that, that no, I know, but 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 you do agree that he said what he wrote in one Corinthians is not from God because what Paul himself said is not my opinion. He has said that what I'm writing to you now is not from the Lord. Therefore, it's not God's word. He said now, so he's referring to the point that he wrote. Yes, what he's written in that text is not from God, but you believe it is from God. Which is a contradiction. Well, you know, you know better than Paul, well, who wrote God, it. I believe that God is. I believe that God's work for him anyway. Okay. Which is another. Yeah. Whole that, that's, that's, a, that, that's a different question. You, you said that Paul thought he was writing God's word. Paul didn't. He denied he was writing God's word in one Corinthians. Okay, so I believe that God's work for him. I know. I know what you believe. But what did okay, Paul so think? Okay. So I believe that God is working through um, him. Yeah. At this point in in First uh, Corinthians chapter seven. Chapter 7, verse 12, where he says, And now he's just referring to this point I'm about to make about marriage. Um, he's saying that, like, this is, this is, um, not from God. He says that. He says that. No, read it. He just says that. He just said this is not from God. Look what? right there. He says, Have a look at the Bible. To the rest, I say that if any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she pleases. No, I, not the law. There's this, but he specifically distinguishes what he says from what God has said. Yeah, to the rest, to the rest I say, I. I am not the Lord. Okay, sorry. There's a part where he emphasizes that this is not from, from God. God. Exactly. But you say it is from God. So. Yeah, but I'm, but he, I'm saying that he's referring to that particular. Uh, yeah, that teaching. That yeah. So, so that so that part of God's word is not God's word. Paradoxically, that's what you're saying. Yeah, but it's I. But yeah, I, well, you agree but, then. But, you but agree. then my, my my point is that I believe that God's still working. Yeah, but, but that's not the point. That's irrelevant. The point is, what does Paul himself testify about what he writes? And Paul rejects what he writes is from God. But that's not what Paul says. He says it's not from God, it's from himself. Yeah, I know, but... You, you can't override Paul and say, well, actually, it really was from God, Paul. You were, you were being modest. Are you, are you saying he's been modest and he, he really meant that it was from God? No, he explicitly says, this is not from God. This is my view, but you have elevated Paul's no, human believe, words to yeah, position of divine but I, but I status. That, like, scriptures are the contradict itself, so if, if we're, Why we're, not? Well, why can't scriptures contradict themselves? Because if there's any contradiction, it's probably wrongly interpreted by us. Anyway. The Bible's full of contradictions. Well, that's what you would say because you've got no, there, there are real, I can give you but ten anyway, on top of my head. Just, just, <laughs> just focusing on this right yeah. now. Um, believing with, with this presupposition that all scripture is God breathed, then through that um, I, end, I, I gain an understanding of God's authority um, through, in His word yeah. and writing. I understand. And through that, when even when um, Paul is saying, "Oh, this is not, this is just me. This teaching is not like um, from the Lord. It's still coming from the Lord, inspiring him to write that." I know. I, I think what you said, I understand that's your belief, but.
but it's not um it's not what uh, the Bible itself teaches. That's your belief you brought to the Bible. No, because when you say all scriptures God breathed, that's referring to the Jewish Bible, not the Christian Bible. And when you say you believe God, uh, Paul is inspired by God, and it, it, what he says is God's word, that is explicitly contradicted by Paul himself in 1 Corinthians, where he explicitly says it's not from God. So you're bringing your beliefs to the word, uh, the, the, the words on the page. It's not what the words on the page say. So your religion is not biblical, I would argue. It's a man-made system uh, about the Bible, but it's not required from the Bible, let alone by Jesus. That would be my conclusion.